welcome back. It feels like it wasn't that long ago that we had a discussion, but here I am. So, hope you had a great week. I am here as usual to update you on the goings on on the aristocracy of HR. So this week I'm up to a bit of mischief. How so? So basically, the title of this week's article is why I have trust issues with HR. I don't have pearls on, but if I did, I would clutch them. Yeah. So, you know, you might be wondering, where is this coming from? For God's sakes, you were an HR practitioner. I mean, for God's sakes, you are still an HR practitioner because, like, that's what you do in business. Um, but it's not what you all think. So really what my goal was with this article was to kind of one, admit some of my disdain of how we operate in HR and also to bring to light some of our weak spots, which I've done before. I don't really like to belabor the issue, but I think it's important in any regard, whether it's personally or in business, to recognize what your weak spots are or areas of improvement and to remain cognizant of that so that you can actually begin to improve or fix it. Um, I also wanted to bring to light in this article, and I hope that, that this particular point comes through, is that we need to stop allowing people or detractors rather to come sit with us what do i mean by that i mean we need to kind of stop inviting just anybody to come sit at the hr table so we've spoken so much about wanting a seat at the table for years to the point where nobody wants to hear from us on that subject anymore but what about our table who are we allowing into our discipline who are we allowing to sit with us? And I suspect that we're not letting all the right kinds of people to be at the table with us. And so I feel like we need to be a lot more selective um, and we need to be a lot more cognizant not to bring the wrong people up with us, right? I'd like to think that we're moving upward and onward and that we're going to start to see the error of our ways and do things in a better manner. But in order to really thoroughly make that improvement, we need to make sure we have the right people and the right jobs. And it's been my experience that there are a lot of people in HR that really shouldn't be in HR. It's not the job you take because, oh, it looks like a good profession or it looks like it could pay well. You've got to be up to the challenges that you face. And that was really the heart of what I was trying to get through in the article. So if you haven't read it, please hop over to the aristocracyofhr.com and check it out. Um, it is getting a lot of traction and for that I am always thankful. So in an effort to test, I'm going to actually cut it short this week. Um, I've been told from a content creation standpoint that it is um, most favorable if you can keep your videos short, sweet, and around four minutes. So Let's see if me speaking effectively 11 minutes less than I normally do helps to get more eyes on it. I believe, personally, content is king, so I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. But there are two things working against us this week. One, I'm famished and a little bit under the weather. And two, I really and truly want to test this and see if there's any truth or validity to it. So short and sweet, check out the article. Those were the salient points that I wanted to get through. And as usual, you can catch me on the blog. You can catch me at Zarina of HR on Twitter. 
Um, and obviously you can comment here and I will be sure to engage with you there if there are any comments or questions that you have. So thank you for tuning in. Have a great weekend and I'll see you right back here next week. Peace. <laughs>